What's good, YouTube? Y'all already know who it is, man. It's your boy Q, a.k.a. Uh, the Wave Man, man, man. Here with TheWaveNobby.com to make sure your vocals go from sounding like this. Let me on. And now I want. To sound like this. Let me on. And now I want you gone. All from your home studio. Let's get right into this brain thing thing. Yay! Gone. What's good everybody? Welcome back to a Wave Monopoly tutorial where today we are going to be going over how to record vocals properly like the professionals, okay? So today we're going to be going over a number of different techniques that are going to be super instrumental to getting you the sound that you're looking for coming out of those speakers, okay? So what we're going to be going into are a number of different things, guys. And right now we can take a look at it right here as you can see. We're going to be going through these right here, all right? Now, these are going to make sure that you're able to get a good sound going into the microphone so that you have a great sound coming out of it, all right, guys? Now, let's go over one of the most important aspects when it comes to recording vocals anywhere, all right? And that's the actual environment that you're recording the vocals in. Now, when I say that, I mean the actual room that you're recording your vocals in, all right? Now, most of us, we are at a home studio, right? So. We have a lot of blank walls, all right? We might be in a square room where there's a lot of blank walls and that's very bad for vocal recording because you'll get all type of slapback delays, all type of reverbs, echoes, and these are things that come with the room. So if those things are in the room already, that just means that's something that you can't control, all right? Now, when it comes to recording vocals, the most important thing is having control over what goes into that microphone. Once it gets into your DAW, you want ultimate control over it. So the best thing to do is have a dry sound going into that microphone so that you have ultimate control over it inside the DAW. So how do we conquer that problem? Well, we have to treat the room. Now, Yes, treating the room can become very costly, but at the same time, there's many different cost-effective ways to go about treating your room. And the room that I'm currently in right now is acoustically treated. Each of these walls have a two inch thick fiberglass acoustic panels behind the fabric on the wall, okay? Now, that can be very expensive, okay? So there are other more cost-effective ways to go about treating your room. For instance, if you see my last home studio tour, you'll see that I actually had the room treated before with acoustic panels. Though it didn't cover the whole entire wall like this home studio, it definitely did the trick and I was able to record amazing vocals inside that room. Now, if you need a more cost-effective way and you just can't afford to get that type of acoustic treatment, you're still in luck, all right? Because most of us, have a closet okay filled with clothes filled with clothes i've done it before i've recorded a lot of songs that you guys have actually heard inside of closets before okay now if you have a closet and you you, you just stick your microphone in between that bunch of clothes okay you pad it with you pad it with pillows you get a cover hang it over your back on top of the you know on top of the railing anything that you need to do to basically get fabric around that microphone with a little bit of space to eliminate the blank walls is going to do you very well with acoustically treating your room okay guys so that's acoustic treating now step number two is your microphone all right everybody is just such a, a pandemonium about what microphone people are using um and and what i think about it i think it's less of the microphone that you're using but actually how you're using the microphone okay i believe most microphones do the trick okay I, I definitely do yes there are microphones that sound better than others of course of course but i think most microphones do the job whether they're around a hundred dollars up to five hundred dollars or even further of course but it gets super minuscule in the quality that uh, changes from about $500 up into those higher range of microphones. But of course, you know, professionals are very, very, very antsy when it comes to all those little details make the big um, difference. But like I said, guys, I think most microphones work. Now, when it comes to microphones, I definitely recommend anybody giving a vocal performance to get a condenser microphone with a cardioid polar pattern. Now, what is a cardioid polar pattern? Now, what that means is using the front of the microphone, it's picking up sound only coming from directly in front of this diaphragm right in front of here. See that diaphragm is kind of shining? Yeah, 
picks it up straight in front of that okay now the reason being is because basically when you're recording you want as little room sound like we said as possible you don't want it picking up your ac you don't want it picking up your fan from your computer you want it picking up your voice and your voice only so i would definitely recommend that a cardioid polar pattern condenser microphone okay if you want to know what I recommend around $100 or so, these are the microphones I recommend for about $100. And these are the microphones I kind of recommend for about up to $500, all right? Now, regardless of the microphone that you're using, guys, you're going to need a pop filter. What is a pop filter? A pop filter is a piece of fabric, whether it be, you know, fabric or in this case, I have a metal pop filter that stops all the plosives between you and the microphone. This is very important because what happens is if you do not have a pop filter and you're recording into the microphone, you're going to be getting a lot of plosives, okay, which are very those, those airy type of clicks and pops that you're not looking for when you're recording. One of the main things that I want to go over right now is called the proximity effect, okay? So proximity effect is basically going into how close or how far you are to the microphone okay so we have our microphone and we have the pop filter okay now i recommend being about this far from the microphone your hand about open-handed this far from the microphone when you're recording vocals okay this is what i recommend now what the proximity effect is the closer you get to the microphone the more closer it's gonna sound it's gonna have a lot more bass picking up into the microphone. It's gonna have a lot more bass, uh, be a lot thicker vocal, okay? Now you can use this to your advantage when it comes to maybe a, you know, maybe you have a higher tone of vocal and you don't have too much bass in your voice. So what you wanna do is come closer and you wanna be up on that microphone and you can kinda use this to achieve that more fuller sound, okay? And likewise, if you have a lot of bass in your voice, you might wanna push away from the microphone to kinda get a more thinner, cleaner, crisper sound okay you want to push further away from the microphone looking directly into that microphone so that you're getting the best sound possible okay that's the proximity effect and like i said you can use it in many different ways guys um so when it comes to trying to achieve a more emotional effect you might want to pull closer to the microphone to get more intimacy with that microphone okay and like i said when you're getting you know maybe you're doing a chant a chanty type of hook you might want to literally step far away from that microphone and scream and chants and use the actual room sound to get picked up into the microphone so it can actually get that chanty type of vibe guys that is how you take advantage of the proximity effect now the next thing that i think gets really overlooked when it comes to recording vocals guys is headphones all right Headphones. I think this gets super overlooked many different times, guys, is the headphones that you're using and how you're using them when you're recording, okay? Lots of times I'll receive mixes, guys, and I'm literally hearing the song. If I mute the beat, I'm gonna be hearing the song while the person's rapping. Like, I shouldn't be hearing headphones in your main vocal leads, all right? So the first thing is, guys, make sure you have a good vocal balance in your headphones, okay? Um, many people, like I said, crank the volume way up to the point where you cannot, you can't get rid of it. It's double vocal inside, okay? And that's what you don't want, okay? You don't want headphone bleed, the music bleeding into the vocal recording, okay, guys? So I definitely recommend closed back headphones, okay? Closed back headphones are exactly how they sound. They're closed headphones with this this kind of foamy material here, it kind of muffles, so when it gets on your ear, it grabs the whole ear. Now what this does, it eliminates anything coming in, you know, what you're hearing, and you don't hear background noise, you don't hear any of that, and it keeps what's in here in your ears, okay? So definitely, when recording, get closed back headphones, and these are some of the closed back headphones that I recommend, all right? Now, I don't really recommend going over $200 for headphones. It's just something that I've never done, and I've been totally fine. Uh, really, the headphones that I use are only $100, and I swear by them. Now, when I'm recording, guys, with headphones, I have one side actually fully on, and then I have another side halfway off and on. Now, the reason why I record this way is because I feel like it gives me a truer sound. It, it gives me a truer perception of what I'm putting through the microphone. I've seen people definitely record with two earmuffs on, 
But in my case, guys, that 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 kind of skews my performance when I'm going through the microphone. I'll, I'll, I'll overdo it sometimes because I'm overcompensating for not really hearing my actual voice um, come through my ears. So like I said, guys, I kind of do this to make sure I'm in tune. I make sure that I'm, you know, getting all my pronunciation, all my little nuances correct. I like to have a headphone off to hear that. All right. Now that we got all that out the way, guys, the next thing is checking your levels. All right. Levels are very important, guys, because levels literally are is your vocal gain and levels going into the DAW. All right. Now, this step is probably most crucial because when you're recording your vocals, guys, there is no undoing this. The only way to undo this is going to be you actually re-recording your vocals. All right. And a lot of people and I've had this problem before where I'll record vocals, you know, I'll start a song, then go to the next day and start to record that same vocal uh, track and it doesn't sound the same. And that's probably one of the most frustrating parts of recording music. And this, doing it this way, I would hate for you to go record and you hear your song and you hear it clipping, you hear noise in it and you gotta re-record it and it just never was the same. <laughs> Drizzy, nothing was the same. Okay, I don't want that to happen to you. So guys, please, 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 please pay attention to your vocal levels. Okay, guys, so optimal recording level, I will tell you to record anywhere from about negative 16, um, negative 12 to about negative 10 dBs. Okay, now always when checking your levels, guys, look at the meters. Look at the meters, do not look at the waves, okay? Because in different DAWs, guys, those waves that you're looking at can actually be changed and it has nothing to do with the gain coming into the microphone. So please always look at the meters, guys. Meters don't lie, you hear? Always look at the meters, okay? Now that we went over the mic, the microphone placement, headphones, room treatment, and microphone levels, guys, the next thing that I strongly recommend is recording into a preset, okay? Recording into a template, all right? Now, what a template is, is basically a session that is mapped out with all the vocal chains that basically get you to that almost finished level, okay, of recording quality. Now, the reason why I say record into a template is because for an artist, this all this is all the difference, all right? It gives you confidence. It gives you a, 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 a kind of like a a map of what that song is going to sound like from the start of how it's going to sound like at the end okay with minor tweaks you know what i'm saying so this gives you that confidence to actually get a great performance out of your artist now that is the most important part guys getting the performance out of your artist a confident performance okay now recording to a dry session the no-go all right you have no vision of where that song is headed to all right another great reason of using a template is because it gives you a lot of inspiration all right not just inspiration to record but what to record it, it'll help you get different different nuances in your voice because you're hearing what that's going to sound like on record you get what i'm saying so i strongly recommend finding a template building a template or if you don't have a template guys visit wavemonopoly.com where we have vocal preset templates guys that's fully mapped out for all type of different sounds vibes voices all type of different things guys it's literally like being over the shoulder of the mix engineers to your favorite artist except for you have it firsthand on your computer like if i had templates when i was you know first starting out it literally skips so much of that learning curve that it takes to learn how to vocally mix when you have it right in front of you seeing how these chains are created and how these things are supposed to look and give you that idea for you to just customize to exactly your voice all right guys so definitely check that out link in the description wavemonopoly.com okay guys so that's another tip to record into a vocal template all right guys so now that you have a session that's actually ready to record into guys there's nothing more more important than perfecting the lead vocal okay guys nothing is more important than perfecting the lead vocal yes in a session there's going to be a lot more things going on than a lead vocal you got your instrumental you got your vocal dubs you got your background vocals you got your ad libs here panning here left right everywhere but nothing is more important than nailing that lead vocal guys so make sure you're nailing that lead vocal take the time to truly perfect that lead vocal because it is the main part of the song all right guys now when you come into a, a session and you're ready to record guys unless you're creating the song on spot and you're experienced with creating a song on spot landing the emotions landing 
all those little nuances on spot, guys, please have your song rehearsed, all right? Rehearse, 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 perfect it. Don't be in the studio reading it off your cell phone, all right? That's gonna skew your whole performance. You're gonna be looking off to the side. The microphone is not gonna be catching your vocal how it's supposed to catch it. You're going to be sounding like you're reading off of something, guys. Don't do it unless you're experienced with reading, holding it here so that you're able to actually read straight here and you have the emotion and the projection going through the microphone. A lot of people have not mastered that yet, guys. So if you're one of those people, guys, please rehearse, 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 perfect, perfect, perfect before you step in front of this microphone or you will be back to re-record or you will send it to a friend and you're not gonna hear nothing back, uh, okay? Listen. Don't do it to yourself, okay? So guys, perfect the lead vocal, okay? Now, the main thing that you're gonna wanna focus on when perfecting a lead vocal is projection, okay? You wanna project, all right? You wanna have timing, okay? You wanna have your melodies and cadences, and you're also gonna want to put emotion through this microphone, all right? That is the most important thing, guys, getting that emotion, that projection, everything into this microphone so that it comes out sounding the way that you want it to sound. All right. Don't think that you're going to come here. Uh, I've been trying to get it every single day. I've been grinding, grinding, grinding all the way. I've been grinding, grinding, grinding all the way. And think it's going to come out sounding like grinding, grinding. Don't think it's going to come out. <laughs> Yo, don't think it's going to come out how you think it's going to come out. All right. You got to go through this microphone. I've been grinding, grinding, grind. All right, I don't even know what I'm talking about. But listen, let's get into this, guys. I'm gonna give you an example of how to project through this microphone, guys. You're gonna to wanna to project your voice through the microphone like you're talking to somebody behind the microphone, all right? You're gonna to wanna to get your emotions into it, guys. Your emotions. Emotions is very important, all right? All those little cracks that you'll hear in, in, in voices. You know, you might hear the young thug, hey, hey, it's like a little cough. He's putting in there okay don't be afraid of those imperfections those emotional things that's gonna come across those grunts if you're singing do not be afraid to put that in the microphone because those are the things that's gonna give you those nice characteristics to evoke the emotion that you're gonna want to be coming through these microphones to your listeners all right guys by doing this guys experiment 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 so that you find what makes you you as an artist okay guys experiment do not be afraid of those imperfections because that could be the thing that makes you you. You get what I'm saying? All right? All right, let's get into it, man. So let's go through an example, a live example, so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. Right now, I'm going to show you guys how to record properly with emotion and perfecting that lead vocal so that you're able to get what you, what you want to come out. You feel what I'm saying? So as you can see on the screen, guys, we are looking at the Kid Roy's vocal preset template for Pro Tools. This is the Waves version. And so we're just gonna record right into it. I didn't touch anything, no EQs, no anything. Let's go ahead and get into it and actually start recording. All right, guys, now. Let's get it. As you can hear, this sounds amazing. Let's get into it, man. So let's go ahead and record. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You play with my brain, I'm starting to go insane. As you can hear, you can hear the emotion that I'm putting into this record. Literally, I'm literally, ha, ha, ha. I'm adding the grunts, those, those roughness in the back of my throat. I'm adding that. I'm adding the, ha, ha. I'm adding the, the, the cuts in between that vocal, guys. I'm adding those things to translate this emotion through this track. Let's listen to it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. play with my brain. You know I want you gone. You know I want you gone. 
it's crazy. Like literally going through this already, this template, I'm, I'm already feeling inspired. Uh, let me just go ahead. Like I'm feeling super inspired. Oh, that's crazy. Ooh. Let's try something. Let's try something out. Yeah, playing with my brain, I'm starting to go insane I usually don't complain, but my heart ain't been the same Since you let me on And now I want you gone Crazy, super inspired by just hearing the different effects that this preset is bringing. It's allowing me to literally just go in there and put my vision down. Let's get it. It sounded like a full track already. Sounding crazy, guys. Perfect the lead vocal. Uh, that's like a little far here, but perfect the lead vocal, guys. Takeaway note. Let's get into the next step. Now, the next step that you're gonna need to take in order to elevate your vocals and your recordings at home, guys, is your vocal production and vocal arrangement. Now, what is that? That's literally all the extra things that go on behind the scenes, those backgrounds, those doubles. There's a lot of different techniques that goes into making vocal arranging, all right? There's harmonies. There's so many different things, all right, guys? Now, there's artists like Drake and Roddy Rich who mostly depend on their lead vocal and literally minimum to no ad-libs in the background, guys. It's literally straight lead vocals, and that's enough for their music. To, to translate emotionally and, and just bang and just make people gravitate to that music. But there's so much other ways and different type of genres of music that allow to thrive in different ways. And guys, there's vocal doublings, there's harmonies and R&B type of records. Um, Pop Smoke is super known for doubling all his vocals, all right guys? So there's many different techniques and we'll go over a few now which are doubles. For instance, what is a doubling vocals? That's you having your lead vocal and that's also you having a second vocal that is literally saying the same things as that lead vocal, all right? To back that track, all right? It kind of gives you a bigger feel. A lot of these techniques, vocal arranging techniques can give your songs bigger feels and make them feel a lot more musical than just going with a, a, a lead, okay guys? Now, we'll go over an example right now. I'm gonna have this song that I wrote here. Um, this is called The Truth. Uh, just go ahead and listen to this vocal or this song with a lead vocal alone, and then this song with harmonies added to the background, okay? Let's go ahead and listen to it. Lead vocal and music only. Now, listen to that same song with the lead and all the vocally produced, arranged background harmonies and doubles in the background. Wow, that, that's a huge, super crazy difference. Now, you're, listen, we're all entitled to our own opinion, but if you ask me, I like 
the second one better for this song, all right? This song is an R&B song, and I think that this makes this a lot more musical, a lot more emotion evoked with the harmonies in the background, guys. And these are things that you can implement into your recordings, which are gonna give you better vocals from home. Now, the last and most overlooked technique, guys, is vocal editing, cleaning up your takes. Cleaning up your takes is all the difference, okay, guys? There's different things we can do. We can clean up our takes. We can nudge vocals that are off timing. We, we wanna perfect these vocals, so nudging vocals are okay. Get them on time. If you're doing doubles, if you're doing harmonies, nudge those vocals, make sure they're on time. Use automation to get rid of some of those breaths, but keep them natural at the same time. Or cut the breaths if you don't desire breaths for song. Get rid of all those clicks and pops. Get rid of that space bar when we stop recording at the end. That, that's what gets me every time to stop. When I click that space button, it gets me every time. So make sure you get rid of that at the end of the vocals, guys. Listen, just take the time to do the little things. It's gonna make all the difference, all right? Now, now that you've seen how to record vocals like the pros, guys, look, what you still here for? You already know who it is, man. It's your boy Q from thewavemonopoly.com. Make them hits, like now. And if you're not gonna go make a hit, just go watch another video and step the game up. You already know who it is, man. It's your boy Q, that real boy, AKA. The Wave Man, 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 man. Here with thewavemonopoly.com. And hey, until next time, huh, make them hits. Let's get it. Dunzos!